I was replacing today this uh, GFI because it stopped working and I think it'd be kind of interesting to find out uh, what it looks like inside. So let's go ahead and try that. By the way, this is one of these little electric screwdrivers. Uh, you'll get to see it in a second how uh, well it works. And uh, so you just stick it wherever you want it at. Uh, oh, not for these screws. Okay. I need a smaller bit, but I'm going to just do it manually. So there are four screws in this particular model that holds the two halves together, which means the white part and the black part. I've never taken one apart because they always work, but this one stopped working. And uh, nice and long screws. They'll become handy for something. It's hard to find sometimes those screws like these. Okay, so now let's put this aside. I'm going to hold the front panel down and there's a sticker that's holding it down so I'll just use my nice long fingernails there we go okay so that's the cover nothing new there here are the two buttons that do the reset and uh, and test so this is the test button and here is the reset button it has this uh, weird looking little shape like that. And this is just plastic. Okay, can we go inside? How do I take this out? There we go. So this is just the bracket that holds it in place. And oh, this whole thing comes apart. Oh wow, it's very complex much more complex than I thought so there's another spring down here uh, this is the movable part so this is actually what uh, disconnects the uh, disconnects one side or the other that is really really cool and let me show you the inside my golly I did not expect it to be this complex so that's why they cost uh, six seven eight nine ten dollars fifteen dollars depending on where you buy them uh, so there's a whole circuitry in here and this part comes out I have no clue what that last piece this is a relay so this part here is pretty simple this just uh, this just basically when you do the reset whatever then it just holds it down like that uh, this is part of the mechanism that uh, uh, when you are uh, putting the wires in through the through the bottom part uh, I'm sorry um, this side here there's holes in here it used to was that you pushed it in and it was kind of a headache to pull it out uh, with the other screw but now you can put two wires on either side and uh, the, this little this little metal uh, piece as you screw it in moves this direction and uh, of course it will uh, therefore pinch the wire um, against this plate here right here this little u-shape piece so somewhere here uh, I don't know where I where those oh here they are so this goes like that this goes like that like that so when you uns when you screw it in this distance changes anyway so there is another coil in here only one wire goes there uh, there's the LED uh, there are two different uh, capacitors this this one this one are electronic electronic capacitors and then this one here is uh, uh, I forgot what the 
what the name of that chemical on that one is, but uh, uh, they are dipped in this uh, yellow. Uh, they are usually protection uh, diodes. Anyway, I mean uh, capacitors. And there's one transistor uh, down here. Uh, uh, there are more capacitors, resistors, and coils. Well, uh, inductors, I should really call that one. It's probably a con inductor uh, because it's a uh, green, funny looking green color. Um, that is really something. This is a protective diode. So this is against surges and stuff. And there's the little chip. And this here is probably a trend. This could be actually a diode. Uh, to make a direct current because this whole circuitry runs on uh, runs on a direct current uh, the circuitry alone of course not the, not the 120 volt or 110 volt the rest of it but that is really something then there is another uh, wire that a single wire goes down there into this uh, this little piece and I have no clue what that does, but I bet you that this long piece in here that was sticking there has something to do with it. Yeah, when I push it down, it stays down. And then when I push uh, on this big black part, uh, I can hear it making a sound. I, but a single wire or oh, there's another wire there okay so there's two wires so this would be like a heat protection uh, that would pop uh, if it gets overheated which by the way most circuit breakers that's how they work uh, this is really really cool I cannot believe how cool this is I did not expect all this circuitry here it's basically a little tiny Specialized computer. <laughs> very, very cool. So this was out of this uh, uh, GFI um, or GFCI actually. Is a, uh, a little circuit protection which all on the outdoor uh, kitchens, bathrooms and in my basement down here since I don't have any carpet I have everywhere uh, all the outlets are GFI. And by the way that just saved me the other day from a big problem. My my anaerobic power supply was flipping and I couldn't figure it out why uh, I'm, I'm sorry the GFI was flipping I couldn't figure out what was the problem the problem was the power supply going to my uh, monitor uh, was going out and that was the only time I knew about it so as soon as I unplugged that it everything started working just fine again on the GFI. So ground flow pr protector interrupter is actually incredibly good for some other goodies. Uh, of course, some things compressors don't like them and some big things like you don't supposed to have one on a refrigerator and so on. Anyway, I guess I talk too much just like usual, but this is what's all is in one of those uh, one of those little uh, I call I still keep calling them GFI, but it's a, it's actually the whole name is GFCI. Uh, a GFI I cut the cut the the C out. I apologize. GFCI. Anyway, I hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm gonna be next thing doing taking all more apart, and then maybe trying to find out uh, which of this part actually failed.